DaVinci Resolve is packed with tools that could save you hours, but a lot of people just don't know that they exist. Today, I'm sharing with you 10 hidden gems that every beginner should know to edit like a pro. Have you ever felt like you're just wasting time by clicking through menus and navigating tools? Many beginners don't realize how much faster they could work with just a few simple keyboard shortcuts. Using shortcuts speeds up the editing process, therefore it gives you more time for creativity and reduces repetitive strain. So let's start off with the basics. If you make an adjustment and you want to reverse that adjustment, you can hold down Command on your keyboard and push Z. If you want to copy a clip, you can hold down Command on your keyboard and push C to copy it. And then you can move the timeline playhead and push Command V to paste it. Another way you can copy a clip is if you just hold down Option on your keyboard and then drag that clip up. And that makes an exact duplicate of that clip. Have you ever tried to delete a clip, but then it just leaves a hole in your timeline? Well, there's a shortcut called Ripple Delete. So if I do Command Z to bring that clip back, and I want to highlight this clip and delete it and have all the other clips line up with this clip here, you can hold down Command, then push Shift, and then push X. And that will ripple delete the entire timeline, all of the clips to move over. So as you can see, I've been navigating the timeline pretty well. And so some keyboard and mouse shortcuts is if you hold down shift and scroll up, you'll close and make the timeline smaller depending on where your mouse is. So right now I'm on the audio track. I'm gonna scroll down, open this up. Same thing up here, you can scroll down and up. And then if you hold down option and you scroll up, you make the timeline smaller. And if you scroll down, you make the timeline wider. And that's all focused around the playhead marker. So if I put the playhead over here, it'll make the adjustments right where that playhead is. If you want to cut a clip real quick, instead of coming up here and selecting the blade tool, you can simply just push B on your keyboard to cut the clip. If you want to bring your cursor back, you can push A on your keyboard and that will bring the cursor back. So pushing B, you can see it turns into the blade and then push A, cursor. If you want to trim a clip to bring up the trim editor, you can push T on your keyboard. So say you want to make an adjustment to this clip right here. If you want to drag it out and push everything over, you can do it like this by selecting the right hand side of the clip. Now, as you can see, it only did it on that clip because I only had that clip selected. So if you hold down command and select this clip and the audio track, it'll select both of those. Then you can extend it out and it will move out both of those clips together. And another one I like to use, especially for audio, is if you click in between two like this and you want to make it fade, you can do Command T that adds a crossfade transition. You can do the exact same thing on videos, Command T to make a simple cross dissolve. Also something just real quick to mention, if you want to do the ripple delete, you can also highlight both clips and hold down shift and press backspace. And here's another awesome mouse keyboard shortcut. Say you have a clip and you trim it, right? So you go ahead and select the audio and the video of that track, but then you move it in and it just covers and cuts out whatever was originally underneath it. But if you go ahead and hold down Command and push Shift on your keyboard, you can drag this over and it squeezes the clip in in between the two cuts. So wherever you put this, as you can see, it's just pushing the timeline over. Super helpful when you wanna drag in some clips just randomly in the timeline and you don't wanna to have to go back and move everything over. Ever uploaded a video to only realize that your text or graphics get cropped on the screen? Beginners often overlook the safe area guides, which can be really annoying if you didn't know that they existed. Using safe area guides ensures that your video will look good on any screen or smartphone. Okay, so for safe area guides, if you come up here to this little rectangle with this drop down, you can select it and it gives you a bunch of presets. One I like to really use a lot is the full portrait vertical. That way I can see what I want to keep for social media and if it even fits or if I need to frame it up. So for example, in the intro of this video, I can come in here and make sure everything fits so it's gonna be good on social media. So any text or anything that I want to have for social media, I can keep in here. But that is if I'm trying to do like a multi-edit all in one. Now at this stage, you may be wondering, well, okay, now that you have the safe area, how would I export just this portion of it? Changing the timeline resolution means navigating deep within the project settings, which can sometimes be time consuming. Fast adjustments mean that you can experiment with different resolutions for faster playback or final delivery without wasting time. Head over to the cut page. And then you'll come up here to the right hand corner of your screen and you'll see this little drop down arrow that has this little, these little arrows. 
Right now I'm in 1920 by 1080, but if you want to quickly just switch it to the portrait mode where you see this crop, you can just select portrait. Now when you go to export your video, it will be in that resolution. But keep in mind, it does resize some things, so if you need to, highlight all the clips that you want to fit into the frame. Then come over here to the right hand side under the inspector. Scroll down until you see retime and scaling. Under scaling, click on the drop down and select fill. Are you struggling to create a consistent look across your timeline and color grade 10 times faster? Beginners often apply color grades to individual clips, which is time consuming and inconsistent. Power grades let you save and apply a consistent look across multiple projects or timelines with just a few clicks. Okay, so you've done your grade for your clip and you wanna use the base adjustments and everything that you've kind of set to default for a good blanket color correction and color grade for your video or videos. In the color page, come up here to the left hand side in the gallery, click on gallery. Right click in this window here and add a power grade album if you haven't already. Once you've done that, go ahead and right click on the frame that you've been color grading. Go ahead and grab still. That will add a new still in your power grade library and then you can right click on it and then select change label. You can rename this to be anything you want. I like to name mine for the specific camera that I'm using and if there's any stylistic look to it and also sometimes the color space that my timeline is in. If you just need to apply the power grade to the footage, what you can do is right when you're starting out and you know the power grade is for that specific kind of footage, you can just come over here and middle mouse click and it will apply that grade to that clip. You can also right click on the power grade and select append node graph. And here's another little nugget of knowledge. Say you do a grade on this and you want to apply it to all of the clips that you have in your timeline. What you can do is select the clips that you want by holding down command and selecting all of the clips. Then middle mouse click on your mouse to add the grade from the clip that you middle mouse click on to the clips that you've previously selected. Now you have that color grade across all of your clips. This is a huge time saver, especially if you wanna have a cohesive look over your edits. One of the most time consuming parts of editing is hunting down high quality assets. Whether it's stock video, music, or graphics, searching across multiple websites can be frustrating and expensive. As a creator, having everything in one place not only saves you time, but peace of mind. What's better is knowing that you can use those assets for commercial and personal projects, even after your subscription ends. And this is where Envato comes in, and they actually made this video possible today. Envato offers all of the creative assets you would ever need all in one place. Video templates, stock footage, music, graphics, and a lot more. With one simple subscription, you get unlimited downloads and a lifetime commercial license for anything that you download. Yes, even after your subscription ends, you can still use those assets legally. And to be honest with you, I've been using Envato for years. I love using their footage for B-roll, royalty-free music, sound effects, and graphic templates for when I do product drops. And it's not just necessarily about saving time, it's about empowering your creativity and knowing that you're covered no matter what project you're working on. And thanks to Envato, I get my projects done much faster, which allows me to enjoy the other things I like in life and also really double down on my creativity. That kind of freedom is priceless. If you're ready to level up your videos, check the link down in the description. Trust me, your future self will thank you. Have you ever felt like DaVinci Resolve's editing space is kind of clustered or even hard on your eyes? The default interface in DaVinci is sleek, but sometimes the darker tones kind of makes it hard for you to focus on your footage. Switching to a gray background softens the interface, giving you a clean, neutral canvas to do your color grading or editing. All right, this one's easy. So if you just come up here to the left-hand side under the DaVinci Resolve at the top, go ahead and select Preferences. Then select User. I have these three boxes checked. Use gray background for user interface and use gray background in viewers. Blackmagic, you need to make this default for DaVinci. Please, please, please. Adding effects or any type of elements that you want clip by clip can be extremely tedious. Adjustment clips let you make non-destructive edits across your entire timeline without affecting the original clip. Come up here to the effects, select effects and drag an adjustment clip on top of your video. Whatever is underneath this adjustment clip is what is going to have the effect without directly affecting the actual clip itself. So for example, if I wanted to just drag this CCTV effect onto this adjustment clip, as you can see, everything under this clip is affected. So if I move the adjustment clip over here, you'll see that this is all affected as well. 
And then actually a quick keyboard shortcut is if you want to deactivate a clip and you don't want this on, maybe you want to see what it looks like with it off, with that adjustment clip selected or any clip, you can push D on your keyboard to deactivate it. So now this is just what it is without it, with it. Do you find yourself importing multiple different types of graphics or overlays for every one of your videos? Managing media across different projects can be a nightmare, especially if you're using the same assets. Power bins give you a shared media pool accessible in every project. So you don't necessarily have to import files every single time you make a new video. This is such a lifesaver. So if you come over here to the media pool, over here you'll have power bins. And if you don't see it, you can come up here to the three little dots click on that and then show power bins. Any files that you put here will show up in every single project that you work on. So for example, all you have to do is right click in this window and select new bin, add a name to the bin and then drag in any media that you want to put in that folder. This is actually one of my favorite features of DaVinci Resolve. Are you tired of reconfiguring your export settings every time you go to export a video? Manually setting your export settings can sometimes lead to mistakes and waste valuable time. Custom render presets lets you save time and have consistency across all of your exports. All right, at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see this little rocket icon. Click on that. This is where you're gonna export the video. Now there are some presets here at the top, but if you wanna make all your custom presets like I do, which by the way, I just made a video on for 2025, which is at the top right hand corner of your screen. So make sure to check that out. But once you've done all of your custom presets, what you can do is come up here to these three little dots, click on it, then select save as new preset. You can name it YouTube, or you can name it social media or Netflix, whatever you want. This is where you would enter it, then select OK. Then at the top, you'll see your new preset. Finding high quality sound effects can be expensive and time consuming. And not everybody knows that DaVinci Resolve has a huge free sound effects library built in. Adding sound effects elevates your edits, making them engaging and professional. Okay, so what you'll wanna do is come to the Blackmagic Design website. Now the Fairlight Audio Library is in the latest downloads. It was from a long time ago, so you don't wanna scroll and scroll and scroll in here to find it. Come up here to where it says search by model or keyword. Type in Fairlight Library. Then scroll down here and you will see this Blackmagic Fairlight Sound Library. Click on the icon, whether you're on Mac or Windows. Go ahead and then enter your details and click this little box down here and register and download. This will automatically download once you get to this screen. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and double click on the DMG file. Select Install Fairlight Library. Click Continue, Continue, Agree, install. Once the installation is successful, close that window. Then you can go ahead and move the library installer to the trash. Then within DaVinci Resolve, if you come up here to the sound library, so for example, if you come up here to the search, unfortunately it's kind of weird. I don't know if this is just how it they've done it and they haven't changed it. You can't really see the sound effects, but you have to like type it in. So if I type in walking and push enter, you'll have sound effects here. If I type in camera see like nothing shows up so I don't know maybe you guys know there's a way to like see a full range of what's in the Fairlight sound library that's the one downside about this but there is a lot of goodies in here that you can use have you ever struggled to remember key edits or communicate that to a team that's working on a project? Keeping track of important moments or notes in your timeline can get really messy, especially when you're collaborating. Timeline markers are like sticky notes for your project. They make it easy to remember edits that you want to make or share ideas with other collaborators. All right, so if you want to add a marker to the timeline, make sure no, no clips are selected. So just like select anywhere like a track, make sure you don't, you know, select a specific clip. Then push M on your keyboard. That will make a timeline marker. You can double click on that marker and pick a different color. And then also you can add notes here. So if you wanna type in add film overlay, you can go ahead and click done. That is on the timeline level. But now maybe if you wanna do it on the clip level, you can scroll to a point of the clip, click on that clip, and then select M on your keyboard and do the exact same thing. Double click on it. You can change the color to something else, maybe like a teal and then type in, cut this down to flow quicker. And this really helps stay organized throughout your timeline because things do get clustered. And sometimes you just, you think you make a mental note, but then at the end of the day, you forget it. So it's simple, very effective, 
And it's also really good for beat markers. So if you need to make a beat marker on a song, you can just go ahead and do that on audio tracks as well. Were any of these gems new to you? Which one is your favorite? And if there's anything that you wanna comment down below, make sure to go ahead and do so. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Boom.